we can work with different properties of a hypothesis. Things like geometrical properties, like the left or top or bottom of the element, or the number of formed hypotheses, or even rectangle arrays, which we've already discussed. And a fuzzy rectangle is a structure that describes a class of rectangles whose boundaries lie within a specific allowed range. Thus, a fuzzy rectangle consists of two rectangles, an external rectangle and an internal rectangle, as pictured. And this is documented in Abbey Help as well. So we can read in more detail about this. And we can also see the functions which create a fuzzy rectangle. If a hypothesis is formulated, say, for a paragraph element, the region of the hypothesis will be built on the basis of the array of rectangles of the detected objects. So you can see that here we really have just a combination of a bunch of rectangles. The region created in this way can be obtained by the region method of the hypothesis. When displaying the region of the hypothesis on the image, the boundaries of the region do not exactly follow the boundaries of each rectangle when you use the simplified region method. There, the boundaries of the search area are smoothed out for better visualization. And we have several methods that can influence how we capture table elements, including, say, a table header or a table footer. A table hypothesis is simply a type used to call a hypothesis of the table element. And if you look in Abbey Help for hypotheses for table elements, you will learn all about the many properties of a table hypothesis. So I can just go ahead and put that on screen. You can search for hypotheses for table elements, and you can see all these different properties. From the hypothesis of the table element, you can gain read-only access to the detected columns. And this is described, again, in detail in Abbey Help. So you can search for table column hypotheses and get the information about these different methods. So in summary, we talked about post-search relations allowing us to apply constraints that are applied to the properties of a hypothesis in Flexi Layout Language. And constraints can check and correct or modify the quality of a formed hypothesis. Remember that code is executed only after the hypothesis is formed and is executed independently of all other hypotheses. And any command returns an estimate of the quality of the hypothesis. In this presentation, I've referred to Abbey Help a couple of times, and I want to refer one last time to Abbey Help. And I want you to focus on in Abbey Help, in Flexi Layout Studio's help section, a section called Tips and Tricks. So there's all sorts of advanced topics here in Tips and Tricks, like using nearest and fuzzy quality to search for elements. And it will go into great detail about tackling a, a variety of issues. And then the real benefit here is there's corresponding Flexi layouts and Flexi Capture projects that you can refer to. And we'll take a look at that right now. You saw in the help file that the path was indicated that if you go to Users, Public, Abbey, FlexiCapture, 12, Samples, FlexiLayout Studio, Tips and Tricks, there's quite a few different uh, Flexi layouts here. And here they were referring specifically to these projects. And now all of a sudden, all of the text in the help file 
will make more sense because there's layouts that correspond to exactly what they were talking about. And in this case, we're going to have some examples of some fuzzy quality usage. And another thing that you should know about fuzzy quality is unlike the nearest to function, you can stack fuzzy quality statements. So you could say nearest to the left of the page, nearest to the page top, as well as preferring the largest font. So you can really stack fuzzy quality statements together and get some very powerful results.